but it was an objectively bad day for the Big 12. Mark is is correct in being worried about the conference because of that. And it was a bad day objectively for the Big 12 for, I would tell you, like five reasons. I could come up with five reasons why this is a bad thing for the Big 12 that Iowa State and K-State went down, which both teams have been flirting with disaster for a while. That's another important point here, and it probably just makes the point of the Big 12 detractors even more that I would say, well, you know, they just, John, they weren't that great at teams to begin with. They were flawed enough that Iowa State was going down to the wire with UCF and K-State was going down to the wire with Kansas and Tulane. Um, couldn't hang on to a lead at Colorado and had to throw it together at the end, right? But this does really feel like it kills your chance at getting multiple teams in because – K-State's definitely, I mean, that's that ship has sailed. There's no at-large scenario for K-State anymore. It is win the Big 12 championship and get in or nothing else. You've got two losses. One of them is to Houston. And even if Houston winds up being a bowl team, there's been enough damage reputationally done to Houston for struggling through the first half of the season when people are paying a little bit more attention. And that's, I think that's, that's out the window. Okay. Uh, for Iowa State... Well, oh, and not only that, it, there was a blowout loss to BYU, right? A blowout and a loss to a bad team. The at-large case, even total chaos. I think that's done for K-State. Uh, Iowa State, already outside the AP top 10 before this happened. I mean, you guys know how much consternation there had been among Big 12 fans about the AP poll and where where Big 12 teams are being treated as far as that goes, and Iowa State was a big part of that. Um, Iowa State was ranked 11th. People felt like they should be higher. It's hard to see them getting into the top 12 with two losses. Assuming because if it's going to be an at large bid, it's not going to be Iowa state winning out the rest of the year. So they would have two losses, whether it's 10 and two or 11 and two, having gone to the big 12 championship game. I think the selection committee may treat the big 12 slightly better than the AP poll, although maybe not, but I think they would treat the league slightly better but not good enough to get Iowa state into the top 12 here. That's a real problem. That's a real, real problem outside of, again, the BYU going unbeaten and losing a close game in the championship game. Basically the 2022 TCU scenario where they had a 12 and 0 unbeaten regular season, took a lot of doubt along the way and then lost in overtime to K state in the big 12 championship game. That was actually still enough to get them into a four team playoff at the time. So it's possible it can be done. There is some doubt about BYU for sure, but there was also some doubt about TCU that season as well. And it still worked out in the end. So I think that is a possibility, but be a tough thing to pull off. And it will be even tougher to pull off somehow K-State, Iowa State, or, you know, I guess Colorado is another worthy discussion here. Would they have any at-large case? They might get helped a little bit by just the fact that they've got Coach Prime and some really high-end talent. We'll see how the committee judges that. We're going to get the first college football playoff rankings on Tuesday, and that will tell us a lot as to how the committee is going to handle Big 12 teams here and how much respect will be out there. I would think that not even so much because like the committee is thinking, oh, it'll be a great TV draw if we have Coach Prime in the playoff. I would think it would be more like, well, Colorado feels like they have a pretty high ceiling because of Travis Hunter and Shador Sanders, among others, but predominantly those two. So we should give them a little bit of extra love here. Yeah, that Nebraska loss is not aging very well. But outside of that, it was a really close loss to K-State. And they finished the year really hot. And they've got some really high-end talent that can make them pretty good. Maybe that's out there for Colorado, too. And I should discuss that. I still think that would be a tough putt with them now having multiple losses overall. So... Another thing that's happening here that is equally as concerning for the league now is that I think this pushes you closer toward the scenario where you do not get a first round buy in the college football playoff. And some people have been prognosticating that for a little while now, or at least it was in vogue a couple of weeks ago to have Boise in the four spot in the playoff being the fourth highest ranked conference champion and the big 12 conference champion being somebody ranked below Boise. And right now, Boise is at 15, Iowa State's at 17, K-State's at 21. So Boise at 15, Iowa State's 17, K-State 21. 
Boise's got a leg up. Whether you agree with it or not in the AP poll, they've got a leg up. Again, the question becomes, where does that Boise name appear on Tuesday when the college football playoff ranking comes out? Um, like, would Iowa State or K-State be able to climb enough to jump Boise? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I guess if BYU stays unbeaten and it's Iowa State or K-State or Colorado beating them in the Big 12 championship game, then maybe that does provide you enough juice to jump up above Boise. Uh, Boise's best, the best thing on Boise's resume is a loss to Oregon. Uh, they do have a win over UNLV, but at that point, you would have wins that are better if you were K-State, Iowa State, or Colorado. That That's where a lot of the question would, would come into play. Um, also, one thing that will help is SMU continuing to win to beef up the BYU resume. So I know everybody's, I've seen some comments about that. Everybody's going to have to swallow their pride a little bit. Um, like I can see James here, and thank you for the super chat, James. James says, uh, Big 12 will regret not inviting SMU now that they can buy players. They can buy national championships. Well, SMU certainly looks like the real deal right now. They do. You know, I see keep shopping there. It, it does look like they are pretty legit, and it will be interesting to see. I mean, Miami, by the time you get to the ACC championship game, it'll be a while since Miami would have been tested. SMU may have a real shot there. Uh, we shall see. I mean, I think it's way too early to make mass judgments based on just one year, but it's been a nice showing for SMU for sure. And that they're doing the Big 12 a favor, in all honesty, because it's making that win that BYU has look so much better. So much better. There was a long time and a quarterback ago uh, for SMU. But back to the task at hand here. If you're not going to get help, if SMU does fall off and lose, if BYU is not getting enough respect, if BYU loses a game or two, and then your championship game is between a couple of teams that have one or two losses, then you're really looking down the barrel of Boise could wind up being that fourth highest ranked conference champion and you not getting the bye. And more importantly than just giving yourself a chance to advance further into the playoff, it's the perception hit that that would deliver. Man, that would be such a huge blow to the Big 12 from a perception standpoint, to in the first year of the expanded playoff when everybody has just assumed that the Big 12 would be the fourth highest-ranked conference champion and would get one of those buys. It doesn't happen, and here comes Boise and Ashton Genty, and the Big 12, of course, is what everybody thought it would be, wild, zany, fun, but just a bunch of – below average to decent teams beating up on each other every single week and not good enough, not good enough to lock down a buy in the playoff. That would be bad. It would be bad. I really, I don't even want to think about it, but it would be bad. So there's problem number two, problem number three here with what happened on Saturday with Iowa state and K state losing. It blows a chance for the big 12 to have a really nice showing in those first college football playoff rankings, which come out again on Tuesday would have been great to show up with three teams in the top 12. Now, I doubt that it would have happened, but it could have been close. It could have been close, especially with all the carnage that happened outside of just the Big 12 this week, right? Like Texas A&M went down, Clemson went down. There were a bunch of teams in that same vicinity that lost games and lost games to unranked teams on Saturday. That was really the theme of the day. So if K-State and Iowa State had just won, you were going to move up the pecking order there. And it could have been a really, really nice showing uh, for the Big 12 to have three teams there. Unfortunately, now that's not going to happen. I'll be honest, I was pretty stunned that K-State stayed in the AP and, and coaches top 25. They did. Uh, they're hanging on there, 21 and 22. We'll see how well the committee is going to treat them. A couple of years ago, committee... Still had K-State in the top 10 in the last college football playoff rankings despite three losses. So uh, I guess I am hopeful, but I don't, I don't, I don't know that K-State deserves it. I mean, I would love to see it. I don't know that K-State deserves to be much higher than that right now based on, on what they are. And that's, that's a disappointing thing uh, for the conference right ahead of this big reveal. This also, this is going to hurt BYU's strength of schedule. Um, K-State staying ranked will be an important thing for BYU. It may be a, a bit lazy just to say, hey, you know, the way we're going to judge strength of schedule is just purely 
the ranked wins that you have, but it is a metric that you see a lot and it, it will benefit the Cougars big time. If, it, if you can point to, Hey, SMU and K state, especially because that K state game was so lopsided SMU and K state, we crushed a ranked team. that would be an important thing uh, for BYU to be able to have there. And then finally it, it's Iowa State strength to schedule too. You know, wherever Iowa State's going to factor in here, whether that's winning a Big 12 championship game over BYU and then hoping that people feel good enough about that loss for BYU to still put them in the playoff. The better Iowa State's in this scenario, this hypothetical scenario's win over K State would be on November 30th, the better. So they need K State to keep winning, and a loss there hurts that. You know, it's kind of just this like domino effect of. Losing marquee games, losing marquee wins uh, if you have K-State losing games like that. So that's a big part of the problem here. So that's really how I would outline why it is such a problem going all the way back to Mark and and his comment that he's worried uh, about the Big 12 losing out on a chance for an at-large bid. It's crazy how fast it can go. But it went in the blink of an eye after I was feeling honestly pretty good, better than I thought I would be on November 2nd. It's a bummer. It's uh, it's a real, real bummer. And as I mentioned, it plays very, very much into the stereotype that people have about this conference, where it's a wild, zany league where anything can happen, but there's no great teams and just a bunch of decent teams beating up on each other. Because to be honest, look, I'll defend the league to the end and – I did see, shout out to Clark Williams, who is the Big 12 Communications Director, who tweeted out today that uh, the Sager and Computer Rankings actually have the Big 12 as the second strongest conference in the country behind the SEC. I'll push that as much as we can, but, you know, perception is reality for people out there, and they're looking at a Saturday where, you know, K-State loses to Houston, Iowa State loses to Texas Tech. They just watched Iowa State almost lose to UCF. A couple weeks ago, they saw BYU almost lose at home to Oklahoma State, who's winless in the conference. They're watching, you know, pretty wild game between Baylor and TCU, and they're just thinking, yeah, I mean, it's exactly what I thought. That's exactly what a conference like what I said the Big 12 would be looks like on a given Saturday and a given couple of Saturdays. And uh, unfortunately, it's hard to argue 